Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to have a brief look at GNOME 41, particularly on Fedora 35, which just recently came out. This is not going to be a review of Fedora 35 as much as I wanted to have a look at GNOME. Some people have suggested to have a look at it as it has actually made some, some positive changes out there and uh, or maybe some some different changes we will discuss if these are positive changes or not positive changes over the course of this video so let's just head out first and go on over to their basic release notes so you know six months of work um, obviously 40 was a huge change in how they released um, landing on the desktop going into the um, just the workspace view which I initially thought was kind of stupid but then you see the implementation and it's actually a really good implementation because the way GNOME works without desktop icons or other functionality you always have to boot into that before you do anything else anyway and so cutting out the middleman and launching right there is a fine thing I guess it begs this fun question, of course, there was an article out this last week that we did not cover in the weekly news roundup, and uh, that article had said that um, uh, students, and we're not talking like, pardon me, but basket weaver or liberal arts majors, we're talking like astrophysicists and things like this, couldn't grasp the concept of file folders and directories on their computers because we've been dumbing people down with mobile applications and simplifying things. And that's what I fear, and I've always feared GNOME does, is it tends to dumb things down to the point where people don't realize the purpose of the desktop was to work on the desktop. Like my desktop here or where I'm at. I keep the things I'm working on on the desktop while I can work on them. And the other things are filed away and harder to get to places. When you apply that to computers, you tend to be a little bit more efficient. So I've never really liked the direction that GNOME has gone. But maybe in some ways this is just a further dumbing down of the citizenry maybe this is actually a positive direction. We'll let you guys have that discussion down in the comments. But looking at what we are going to do here, uh, first and foremost, they've added some more power options, and now you have the option to swap the power from the top. They have the performance, the balance, the power saver. And if you're on a battery and the battery runs down to a certain percentage level, it's going to automatically kick on the power saver option for you. So you have those options. They still don't seem to have the ability to set individual uh, lock screens, blank screen options for individual power sources but at least they are making steps in the positive direction. Now, I want to talk about the new software a lot more when we actually get onto the distribution itself. They're adding some, basically swapping on the categories. We'll talk more about that in a little bit and uh, how the new layout works and such. And um, uh, we'll get into that. They have more multitasking options now, hot corners, active screen edges. So these are these have always been there, but they're now a little bit easier to find and manage. And then you can also set the dynamic or the fixed number of workspaces, whether you want those in there or not. We have a new connections app, which will help you manage a variety of different um, uh, computer connections. So remote desktop client type work now integrated in, which is good to not need an extra piece of software. And for any of your devices like your Surface computers that are now coming with uh, SIM cards and the ability to do always on. We do have a new multi, uh, excuse me, a mobile network tab. This will not show up in my preview as I'm looking at this because I do not have an LTE uh, or cellular type chip in my device. If you happen to have it, it will appear and then you can disable um, or enable mobile data, data roaming, and uh, other things like that. You can lock the SM, uh, the SIM card with a pin. There's a lot of different options that you have. So very nice options for people moving into a space where you have LTE chips. So these are all really good things. 
talk about some performance items, uh, music apps, and just a few other items. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on into this. And uh, while it is booting up, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let you guys know that uh, I did not install the standard desktop edition. I was trying to save space, ended up having to fight with it a little bit. I used the net installer, which is still the beta, not the official 35 release. And it doesn't seem to have the capability of getting the um, uh, getting GDM to launch uh, by default. Um, I fought around with it a little bit. If it were like a, a production system, I would invest a little bit more time. But for the meantime, I can just go ahead and get GNOME working and then manually hit Start X once I have logged in. So we have done that and then we're going to land right here on the desktop on Fedora 35. And as we look in the settings, it's going to say it's Fedora 35 beta because I'm using the net install. And uh, the workspace is officially 35 release. The net install is still the beta as of when I downloaded this this afternoon. So... Uh, here is where we launch in, and this is the part where I think it's fine that it launches like this. Of course, we can uh, just type something on the screen to search. I will note it did not actually install any uh, web browser out of the box. I had to install Firefox. Uh, so you went ahead and did that. Here's your various applications. Really it gives us effectively no bloat, so that's good. We do have a little tour of Fedora 35. We have GNOME boxes couple terminals. I'm not sure why we end up with three terminals, but okay, I guess we did. And let's just have a brief look at our settings first. As I said, you don't see the cellular connections, but if we did have some type of cellular modem in here, we would see those connections. We have options for Bluetooth, our background notifications. Here's the new multitasking. You can enable or disable the hot corners and the active screen edges. And then you can set your individual workspaces. Most of the other items that are in here are going to be effectively the same as they have been. There's nothing too out of the ordinary here. And here's where you can see where it's telling us we're on Fedora Linux 35 pre-release. Um, the official desk workspace uh, for Fedora 35 is out. I just went with the net installer to save a little bit of down um, uh, download space. So... Here's kind of our defaults, and let's go ahead and have a brief look again. Uh, I don't think the music app is installed. It is not. We just, just do have a basic uh, maps, photos, videos, really nothing else on here that um, uh, uh, coming by default. Now, the calendar option, this will have the ability now to import a .ics file, so if um, you're sending emails with somebody and you get a, a .ics file in your uh, inbox, you can go ahead and double click it and add it directly to your calendar. So that's good. Of course, you can do your online accounts as you have in the past. Now, the biggest thing that many people have suggested I have a brief look at is the GNOME Store. So let's go ahead and have a brief look at this guy. Now, here on Fedora, when you enable your third-party repositories, you are going to get flat packs installed and uh, configured by default. So that is fine. And really, the GNOME Store has always done that fairly well. Um, I'm not in love with the new design uh, of this. Uh, so here's uh, what we have for our software repositories, and these are pretty much the defaults that I have installed. And one of the biggest concerns that I have with, um, and it's it's GNOME 41, I think it actually became uh, a thing back a little bit previously, it's becoming more and more like Windows 10. By default, it automatically downloads and installs software updates in the background when possible. Of course, you can turn this stuff off, but again, when you're downloading and installing software, it never completely installs until you reboot the system, and then just like Windows 10 fashion, you have to go through and sit there while the logout screen's going there, and it's installing updates. Please be patient. And I'm like, what is this? Linux 95? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Is that Linux 11? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking confusing GNOME with Windows. And this is why I really can't stand GNOME. And it's attempted to be such a modern and amazing new desktop. 
it basically is just reverting Linux into the same nonsense that I left Windows for. So at least we have the easy option to turn it off. You do have automatic update notifications, show it when they've been automatically installed. So, hey, you can turn this off and turn this on and just boot your system on sometime and find your system has just become completely unstable from the latest update. I guess that's a thing, but you can always turn that off. Now, getting to the software store itself, what I notice here, they, they make a big deal about easier categorized. I do not find these new six categories easier to categorize. I thought it was perfectly fine when everything always matched. What is internet? What is multimedia? What is music? Now we have create and socialize and work and learn and play and develop. I have no earthly idea where the hell to find a web browser in this, whereas on the old school of saying internet, I knew exactly where I would find a web browser. What is this nonsense, rainbow non-garbage crap that they're giving us in this stupid store where it's, ooh, socialize, ooh, 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 work, ooh. This is a bunch of childish nonsense. Would you guys go back and put some degree of professionality back into your software store? I mean, really? So click in on this. You can he see your editor's choice. Then you have your other software choices. And notice that it's not even really categorized even inside here. So it's just this giant mishmash of crap. So you jump on here. So create, by the way, is where you're going to find a music player. I don't know what you're, um, what you're creating. I don't think you're going to find a music player. I don't even know. Where do you find a music player at? Well, you see Audacity in there. Um, socialize? I, I don't know. All right. Where am I going to find... Um, let's just find the music app. No music app. It doesn't... Uh, where is it? I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. I hope you know what you're looking for because you can't find it. Because is it under play? I mean, if I want to play a song, but apparently that's all just video games. Here's under work. So you see what the problem is with this right away is we don't have uh, easy to understand categories that are uh, that you can easily find. Now, of course, up here at the very top, we have our, um, you know, just the featured icons. And when you click on on an individual thing, I do like that we have a little bit more detail, better screenshots about what's going on here. So it is good. Um, this this is something, hey, at least uh, Gnome is doing uh, a whole lot better than the elementary team is doing. Here's notes for Gnome. Reviewed via distribution. Uh, it is audible code. It is safe. Works on desktop uh, and laptops. So they're giving us a lot of information in here that is going to be helpful depending on the variety of different devices we have. We have the option to go with the flat pack or the um, RPM options. So these are, this is good for the most part, like how they've put together the individual components. It's actually pretty good, but these new categories absolutely have to go. Um, bring us back something that makes rational, logical sense. It's not quite so childish, uh, because to me, it it, just, it drops the professionality of this uh, down quite a bit. Here is uh, this one here. Nice screenshots. This says it's unsafe. Can read, write all of your data. Uses a legacy windowing system. In other words, X, I guess. By the way, Stellarium is not unsafe. So I would like to see um, what uh, why they're calling that unsafe. Let's have a look at this guy here. So I don't know. Maybe they are actually becoming more like the elementary team. If it's not from the GNOME store. Okay, GNU Cache. Uh, I guess that's GNU though, right? Here's this one. Okay, Thunderbird. I don't know. I don't know. Very interesting. So... My overall thoughts, what we're seeing here, 
Again, GNOME has never been my favorite desktop environment. I think that there's always been a lot of problems. It's pushing the, the borders and the boundaries towards a modernized approach that, frankly, some of us in the computer world don't really care to see. Additionally to that, we're also starting to see with GNOME, we're starting to see this migration into the Windows-esque world of automatic updates and once again, wait to install. Remember when the good selling point of Linux is, hey, you can just push update and continue to work and you don't have to worry about anything again. Eh, no, now it nags you to reboot the system after you push the updates. And then you have to wait for the thing to finish going. And then it's automatically updating. And then it's engaging in the same nonsense that everything else is. Moving our society into this childish world where, ooh, socialize. You know. Let's return back to professionality, please. Uh, that would be a, a little bit better of a thing. Uh, let me know. Do you, Did I completely miss this uh, mark here? Do you agree with my assessment here? Is GNOME 41 going to be your new go-to, or do you think it should just be you know, burnt with fire? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.